Hi, thanks for joining me today. Today on Cooking Together Live, we're gonna do a sweet corn salad. I'm calling it a summer corn salad with avocado. And I came up with this recipe about a week ago when I was working with a friend of mine um, who's in the Cooking Together uh, Supper Club that we have. And we were trying to figure out what we could make with the ingredients that she had in her fridge. And we ended up coming up with two recipes. One was a red lentil curry that I thought she could make with a leftover soup that she had. And then the other one was this uh, corn salad because she had two ears of corn, just like we have. And she had an avocado, she had a red bell pepper. She kind of had all the perfect ingredients to make a fresh salad with her corn. So uh, there's a lot of variations you could do for this recipe. But the basic idea is just to use fresh ingredients you have on hand to go with your corn. Uh, right now in Central Texas, we're not getting local sweet corn. That was about a month ago was I think the last time we were getting really good local corn. So I'm not sure where this is coming from, but if you're watching from New England or somewhere in the Northern US, this is probably peak season for sweet corn so you can still uh, get that. Um, so what I'm going to do is first steam the corn and then just maybe turn it once or twice. I'm going to get some tongs so I don't burn my hands. And a lot of people will put corn into boiling water but uh, you don't actually have to do an entire pot of boiling water. That takes a lot more energy. It makes the kitchen a lot steamier and hotter. You can actually just use a shallow pan like this, a saute pan, as long as it has a lid, and then just cover the bottom with water. And then when you see it simmering, you can even turn it down a little bit to low. And we'll let it steam just for a couple of minutes. And in the meantime, I'll show you what else we're going to put in the salad. I thought we put some tomatoes. That wasn't in the recipe that I provided earlier, but I had some of these really nice baby tomatoes that I thought we'd slice up. Uh, some red bell pepper, some green onions or scallions, uh, some avocado. And then another thing that I just added on the fly today was some arugula because I wanted to make this into more of a main dish salad rather than just a side salad. And then we've also got some fresh cilantro. So let's see, I'm gonna start slicing up some of our ingredients. Uh, so this past week, I had an inspiration to change the name of our Cooking Together project to the Cooking Together Supper Club. And the reason is um, so many people were writing to me that are in the, sup the Supper Club with um, you know, kind of pictures from their families having dinner, creating their meals together in some cases, the kids are helping out. And then I was thinking back to before the pandemic hit and we would have people over for dinner or they would invite us over for dinner and how fun that was. And we would enjoy trying new things or making our favorite dishes when they would come over. And so I thought, why not have, have this be a virtual supper club? And so we're actually going to once a month meet on Zoom to have supper together and do you, want to, do you want to come say hi, Izzy? Yeah. Uh, so we're actually going to turn our little thing into a virtual supper club. Last month we did a, um, our theme was summer Italian cooking. And we made a lot of really delicious things. Some, some things, oh, hi, Emma. Hi, Izzy. Hello. The cats were very excited today about the rain. Do we were too. Right now and got really very like soaking. 
he ran out and he climbed up a tree and he got soaking wet and he's been happy ever since. <laughs> Chopping up some red bell pepper. And you could use uh, tomato instead of the red bell pepper if you want that bright red color, or use a little bit of both. And I think my corn is probably about ready. Turn it one more time. Sweet corn doesn't need much cooking, just a few minutes. I'll do a little bit of green onion. I just do, I might save those white parts for something else and do a bit of the green and light green parts of the onion. And if you ever have parts of the onion, like the roots or the very green tops left over, you can put those in a freezer bag, and then when you are making a vegetable stock or at the end of making a meat stock, if you want to put in vegetables for the last 30 minutes, you can add those frozen onions. I, I keep um, the kind of the outer layers of the onion that you need to peel off, not really the skin, but the inside part if you have to peel off one layer keep those in the freezer, as well as um, carrots, like the tops of carrots or carrot peelings. After I've washed a carrot, I peel it and then put those in there. Also celery. Shiitake mushroom stems are good to put in stock. Those are uh, parsley stems are another thing I save. We're all about saving scraps of things because we also do compost and I started doing a new kind of compost that I'm learning how to do which is called bokashi um, where you are kind of fermenting the compost so that it doesn't smell bad and you can put, dig a hole and put it in your garden after it's fermented and it has beneficial bacteria and helps the mycorrhizae form in the soil. So anyway, we're always saving our food scraps for one thing or another, either putting in the freezer for stock or putting in the compost recycling. And um, it always feels good that you don't have to throw everything in the landfill, right? So another thing you might want to put in, I didn't mention before, is some lemon juice. A fruit fly there. So we will put that in a little later. And then I've got half of an avocado. The seed doesn't want to come out. So this coming month in the Cooking Together Supper Club. We are going to do 30 minute meals. So I thought that would be popular, even though a lot of the other recipes I've done over the past five months, four or five months that we've been doing this have been also been 30 minute meals. I'm just going to make sure that when I'm making them, they uh, fit that bill because even though it may not be a normal back to school time for a lot of families, it's still, things are changing this fall. A lot of stuff going on. Um, some parents like us are home with their kids, um, helping them with their online courses until school starts back up. Um, some parents are having to run out to their jobs and figure out where their kids are going to go. There's just a lot, a lot going on. And so I thought 30 minute meals, some of them will be less than 30 minutes. We made one yesterday that was fish packets. I think someone's trying to call us, Nelson. It's okay. Okay. So fish packets that, um, were so easy, basically, 
um, you know, just takes about 20 minutes to make, including the baking time. Okay. Definitely have to wash this towel after, after this class. Okay. So next step, I'm just gonna cut the corn off the cup. So you might be wondering why not just use frozen corn. It looks like I kind of overcooked this corn. I was talking so much that uh, I'm gonna cut this in half to make it a little bit easier to cut off the cob. That's a little trick. Just make things that you're cutting into a little more manageable size. I could have steamed this a little bit less time, like two minutes instead of three or four minutes would have been fine. But anyway, uh, fresh corn does have, I would say a fresher flavor than frozen corn, but frozen corn will work if that's all you have. This ear's a little shorter, so I'm gonna try to get away with not cutting it in half. And I'm trying not to get too much of the cob I'm just trying to get the kernels themselves without wasting too much. If you are making like a corn soup, you could actually scrape the creamy part out of the kernel. We'll probably still do that for something else. And I'm just gonna put this corn right back into the bowl. I'm just going to break it up a little bit. So we've got the individual kernels of corn. Now the corn is warm because it just came out from steaming. You could let it sit for a little bit, but I also think it can be nice to have a little bit of warm in the salad. Um, to it kind of absorbs the dressing a little bit. And speaking of dressing, I think I'm actually going to make a little bit of dressing in with this corn. So I'm going to sprinkle, drizzle some ume plum vinegar. This is a secret or not so secret ingredient, depending on if you already have it at home. Ume vinegar, or sometimes it's called umeboshi vinegar or ume plum vinegar. It is so good for you and it is so delicious. Highly recommend you get some. It's great for making quick dressings. You could put a little bit of lime or lemon juice in if you want, or the ume vinegar is actually all that you really need. Make sure I don't get any seeds in there because I forgot to bring my juicer out. So just a squeeze of lemon juice to give it that bright, summery flavor. Lime juice would work too. And the reason why I'm doing the dressing now is because the corn will hold up. I'm putting some extra virgin olive oil. Corn will hold up to tossing a bit, whereas something like the avocado or the tomatoes is gonna need to be um, not tossed very much. Putting red bell pepper. Again, if you don't have all these ingredients, it's okay. You can kind of pick and choose what you put into yours. And I just realized I forgot about the cilantro. I'm gonna put the tomatoes. This is looking really good. I think I'll save some of these onions to put on top. Avocado in. Sometimes this kind of salad I don't think to make, um, but then every time I make it, I'm so glad that I did because even though, you know, what I usually do is just have, say, corn by itself, or I have um, a few slices of tomato on my um, taco, but 
I don't often put them all together into a salad, and there's just something really nice about this. Now, what I meant to do was go outside earlier and get some mint, because mint is so good with corn. I forgot to get it, so after we do this, I'm gonna run outside and get some fresh mint. I'm tossing in some arugula. Love baby arugula. If you don't like the taste of arugula, try putting a little bit sweeter of a dressing on it, like um, some aged balsamic vinegar or white balsamic vinegar. Try that and you'll probably like it. Sometimes it needs something sweet. So that's why I put it with the corn. Corn is it's very, very sweet. And oh, some mint. Do you want to get it? Nelson's going to get some mint for us. Just need a sprig or two. So this is cilantro. I know some people don't like cilantro, but keep trying it because I used to not like it. It tasted like soap and all that stuff that people complain about, but I kept trying it, kept trying it, kept trying it. And it's hard to avoid where we live. It's in pretty much everything. And so I just got to where I really love it. Sometimes it still tastes a little bit like soap to me, but not, not in a really bad way, just kind of like, oh, that's a different flavor. And this mint smells so good, probably because it just rained. And that's why it smells so good. Wow, even before I cut it, I could smell the mint. We use a lot of fresh herbs, and I encourage you, if you don't already have um, potted herbs out on your porch, they're so much easier to grow than vegetables. So the pests tend to stay away from them. The only herb I've really had trouble with um, pest-wise is, um, what, what, would I, what would I say? Um, basil. Yeah. Sometimes it gets flies. Um, especially if you buy it from the store, um, the basil plant, and it already has flies, that's kind of when I've run into trouble. But usually it does just fine. Okay. I'm gonna transfer this to a smaller bowl. And the avocado definitely got a little bit mushy in here, but that is okay. It's going to taste really good. The avocado almost became part of the dressing. It was a soft avocado. It was pretty soft, yeah. So, this would be a really nice side dish to serve alongside. Like if you were having a barbecue and you um, were having some grilled chicken or grilled salmon or even hamburgers or portobello mushrooms, any kind of um, grilled vegetable or grilled meat would go perfectly with this because this is like such a fresh raw, you know, mostly raw salad, and that always goes really well. And then, um, oh, it's too late to show the watermelon drink. I was gonna show you this drink that we made yesterday, but it's all gone, Nelson was drinking it. Mm -hmm. So we had a watermelon, speaking of things that go well with um, things on the grill, watermelon, we had yeah, bought one to go with, um, after we were gonna do some grilling, we actually had a vegetable grilling dinner, grilled dinner the other day with um, portobellos and um, eggplant and zucchini. And we wanted something kind of for dessert. Afterwards, we were at our friend's pool. Hey everybody. Out of town. And um, so we made this, the um, watermelon was overripe and I thought I was gonna have to throw it out but it actually tasted okay. It was just like very, very bright red and a little bit overripe, but it wasn't rotten. So 
Mm, still so good. I made it into kind of a refresco, just blended it up with a little bit of lime juice and mint. That's it. Didn't add, add any water and uh, so good. This is a way to go yeah. for 100 degree days. Alcohol will dehydrate you. <laughs> um, fruit, you know, slushies like that are going to really be hydrating. So enjoy making your salad. I hope you will try it. Let me know how it goes. Um, it'd be fun if you could post a picture of your salad to let us know um, how you liked it. And we'll be here next Wednesday with another quick and easy recipe. We don't know what it'll be yet, but we'll let you know around Monday morning in case you wanna grab the ingredients before we go live on Wednesday. So have a great Labor Day weekend, stay safe, and we'll see you next week.